to walk up, so I'm just going to waterproof these first, okay? the last of the potatoes I think I grew what 400 500 pounds last year it'll check my nose I think it was 500 pounds so this is what's left and probably won't eat that many between now and the end of the or between now and planting season so I'll keep at least that many I'll probably keep that and that which these are French fingerling or pink uh, fur apple. Most of that creed is that. Oh, there's a couple other varieties and I think these are the Yukon Gold. can't remember what I grew. I'll have to check that. These are maybe the russet. I don't know. I gotta check my notes. Um, carrots are gone. Beets are gone. Rutabag is gone. The carrots are not completely gone, but the fresh ones are gone. The rest of them are in cans. We did a lot of canning. So pickled carrots, pickled beans, green beans, tons of freeze-dried stuff, including some freeze-dried potatoes, actually, quite a few. I think um, we do strips, or I think maybe just mashed. So mashed and then freeze-dried. So in the, in the uh, freezer room, at the bottom of the stairs behind there's some big totes and that's full of mylar bags of um, various types of vegetables and fruits and stuff that are freeze-dried Me whole meals too and ingredients like cheese freeze-dried whole bunch of stuff like that uh, cabbages are done I've got some kimchi left so the fermented cabbage but all the fresh cabbages are gone probably have there and upstairs maybe half a dozen squash so we need things we know we are going to grow more for sure this year carrots squash cabbage and then just all the other stuff that we eat but those are the things we we've run out of we know we need more of because we eat it a lot it's getting cold in this section because all the, i had insulation everything blocking this doorway and part of the other doorway but now that that's open, I've got cold air coming in here. It's still above freezing, it's just, but barely. But these things literally look like I just put them in yesterday. 
and that was what October I think maybe I think it was no it wasn't November so I think it was October that I collected most of these cured them up on the floor before the cabin was finished but I kept them upstairs on the floor for a few days to cure and then moved them down here and like I said they're rock hard no sprouting just perfect like this is a perfect root cellar I'll be able to uh, control the moisture like this sand I noticed last year no water gets in here at all it just percolates through and goes past the cabin so not no extra moisture is getting in here in fact we'll see what well I didn't have to this year but I guess with that door closed we'll see what the ventilation challenges whether I need to add moisture into this section or not and then have fans blowing it out and circulating it so the plan here is to you're not seeing this section right now because that's all still bags of insulation for doing the ceiling and that ceiling and I'm going to have extra so I'll be able to do the ceiling of the bedroom too but the plan is to put a wall right there where you are dividing so this thing will be divided exactly in half so this will just stay as a, like an aisle away and then shelves the full depth of that wall so 20 inches or so and that'll be full storage of uh, root vegetables right to the ceiling that section there it's probably going to be i think there'll be enough room to combine it into actually two more kind of compartments one would be a cheese fridge or cheese cave would be called so it just needs a little bit of circulation but that's a section that we'll have to add moist more moisture to likely need to get it up to around 55 degrees and I forget what the humidity level is that's my wife's thing and then the second other section is going to be a probably a meat locker for curing meats like full legs of venison next year and maybe pork or something so so essentially one big section for root vegetables another section for cheese meat and maybe even a third section is yeah it would be wide enough to actually do a separate little section for apples or onions or stuff that we want to keep separate that's the other thing we ran out of onions this year because i had onion failure um mainly failure in this garden here so we ended up running out of onions a while ago but uh, we have tons of garlic <laughs> anyway things that would cause other things to maybe spoil or uh, go off a little bit would have to be separated so i might do a separate little compartment in, in that section or a third of it maybe even a half i don't know that section the reason i'm working on this right now i wasn't planning on it. i was going to hook up the electricity but i need to bury a, a grounding i'm having a hard time looking at the camera sorry because the uh, light's shining in my face but behind behind you there i'm burying a grounding plate down deep into the sand and then connecting the ground from the the uh, solar inverter and the distribution panel and, uh, ground those down into the ground into there so I have all my tools and, and miscellaneous materials like there's some more caulking for chinking and plumbing material electrical material and stuff like that and then these things were over there too so in order to make room to work in there I wanted to finish this enough to move these things into there get that done um, do the plumbing from the drain plumbing from the sink well, and the water that's going to pump out of this tank do all that get it connected to the drain that goes out into the metal uh, maybe fill that thing with water and finish running the electrical and then I can finish off the ceiling and the walls in that section and then that whole wall which is the same length as this one on that wall which is still insulation right now that's going to have um, full shelves exactly the same as this all the way along that's where the dry goods will go so canned and uh, and mylar package stuff will go all along that wall so that wall will be full of food this this whole section will be full of food that will be electrical and plumbing with the hallway down the middle to the bottom of the stairs that back section where the stairs are might be my gun locker in there uh, obviously the freezer takes up the full width of that so that's staying in there and there's a bit of a oh, there's a bit of a spare wall there that I can put more food probably on maybe canned goods maybe things like um, 
like dried beans and stuff that we have in jars. So that's uh, so while I'm doing the electrical, I need access and the plumbing. Actually, I need access to this ceiling. That's why it's not insulated yet and vapor barriered, which it might vapor bar vapor barrier that because it will, uh, air can get up through it because it's all cut the membrane above. But um, right here is where the bathroom is, it's right up in that corner. So I need to run the plumbing from there over to the drain over there, and then run water. I'm not sure if I'm running a water line from that tank or not. But if I do, that goes through the ceiling as well and up into there. And then I need to install a couple of, I don't know, probably just a box into the corner or on the wall or where these two walls join that goes up and out with a little fan or not, but probably a little uh, computer fan to circulate air in or out depending on the season, what I need for circulation. And then a couple going out through the, the uh, edge of the joist there as well into that section to get air going that way because there's a window in that section that I can always open if I need more fresh air in here or if I want to control the temperature get lots of air flowing around down here so we don't get mold so it's going to be constant especially for the first year or two figuring out exactly how to keep the air flowing in here and what uh, and how to maintain the, the proper humidity levels and temperatures you know maybe I have to turn a light bulb in one or two of the sections on once in a while leave it on because this is super insulated so a light bulb would heat up the space enough to keep things from freezing if freezing becomes an issue although I don't think it will or if I just need to get the temperature up like the cheese that I was watching that like the cheese that I was maintaining that um, if it's in that section over there it's so cold that it's no longer um, fermenting or curing or whatever so <laughs> basically it would take five times as long for it to get to the point where for aging that's the word for it um, before it would be ready to go where if I put it in the warmer section or 55 degree section then it'll cure or age properly so if it's back in that section, maybe I have to turn a light bulb on once in a while to get some heat in there or some other little supplemental heat. Anyway, I'm going to finish cleaning up that section and then get working on the solar. And I'll come back to this. Well, do the plumbing, do the electrical, then insulate the ceiling, board it, and then I can finish this, the rest of this section. curious about this place for a while. Hey? Eh? Yeah. You haven't been here since since it closed in the cabin. Here, you want to see what's in there? No, no, you're, you're okay. I'll go with you, okay? Hey, girl. You did it. Good job. No, 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 no.
this is going to be my sub pit basically so right here I'm gonna build a well I'm gonna build the ground up first basically create a great big um, gravel sump here so that critters can't get up in there and then I can backfill all of this and insulate it with earth so that there's not as much cold air going up back up through the pipes so by having this I'll make it out of cedar logs probably maybe like three feet deep here full of gravel bring the gravel maybe up to like here even so build this ground up first build the box fill it full of gravel so that this can drain freely because it's going to have some food debris coming out from the kitchen sink this may never see water or anything coming out of it that's a perforated pipe to drain the basement in case the basement ever flooded and it, I'm not seeing any water in there ever so I don't think that's going to happen but I might end up using that to drain that big um, uh, IBC that big plastic tote thousand liter tote that's in the basement that's going to be full of water and I'm going to end up draining water off the roofs into that thing filtered but if I ever need to drain that tank to clean it or whatever, or if I get contamination in it, then I want to be able to open that valve and drain that water straight out to here. So I may run a secondary pipe through this stuff. I think I could do that. Whether it's inch and a half or bigger pipe, or whether I can just get it something, even a flex pipe part way into this stuff because that'll end up taking the water the rest of the way even if I got it in say 10 feet so I know that it's not going to back backwash because there is a pretty good slope on these two pipes and uh, have all my drainage come out to here now I'm only using all organic stuff so I don't, I'm not worried about contaminating the stream uh, but by having this great big sump here gravel for filtration and then I'm planting this all with brand new plants um, the reason I started dumping, I know this is a mess, but the reason I was dumping all this stuff down here is to basically create a massive Google culture mound. So a big organic mound of growing medium. So I'm going to start throwing a lot more dirt and sawdust down here and creating yeah, a great big soil bank across here and plant shrubs all through here. Either blueberry shrubs or um, bug repellent shrub, shrubs. I've got a few ideas. I'll I'll share that with you as I do it but uh, yeah food production and then I may end up putting tiers in it so I have uh, these elevations coming down like flat growing areas that I can grow herbs and stuff that I would use in the kitchen so yeah I'd love to get this cleaned up shortly I think what I'll do is as I'm kind of excavating around the uh, outdoor kitchen whatever soil if I can steal any soil from there, just throw it over here as I as I dig. Or just collect it, pick some wheelbarrows full and start dumping it in here. But yeah, it's a great big compost pile for now. So clean this up. Glue up all these pipe joints and I'm good to go. Just need to hook up the water uh, supply now. Get that pump. Well, it is working, but I need to fill the water and start filling the toad up with water. What are you doing out there? <laughs>